if you were here last week, I talked about standard data views, and this week I'm going to talk about the extended data views, but just a little recap on what exactly are data views. So data views are going to be a client-sided abstraction of data from this server-side data set or BAQ results. It serves as the primary unit of data binding within Kinetic Application Studio. So it's essentially like a window into the database table or the query results where it's holding all of the data that we're going to use in our UI elements, again, like text boxes, grids, drop downs, and all that stuff to be able to interact with the data. And then again, last week we learned that the standard system ones are the Epicor made data views that we have in App Studio. And then the extended data views are gonna be our user-made ones, which we will be going over a brief example of how we can make our own today. And then the purpose of them is just allowing the user to create user-defined representation of data. And again, allowing those data bindings with our UI elements. And the benefits are that they are reusable because once they're defined, our views can be re reused across the apps for different bindings. They are dynamic, so they're able to update in real time. As the user input is changing, it allows you to reload the data and everything. And then it is low code friendly as well. Let's get started into just creating our data view right away. Um, once you're in your application studio and you're in your chosen layer and app and everything, um, you go on the left side and you can choose this little grid part here, and that's gonna be your data view. And then once you press on your ad, you're gonna have this little slide out panel that pops out where you can either manually add your new data view or you can actually use the data guided setup that they have in Epicor. And today I'm gonna go through a manual adding of the data view and I'm gonna show you each section that we have here and explain all of the little fun buttons and all of the little fields that we can fill in and add stuff to. And then again, this is the panel that you're gonna see when you add a new data view, this is what it looks like all blank. So to get started, we can start with our first little section of data view. So the data view ID is just gonna be the identifier for referencing and for data binding. And then your data set ID is gonna be the identifier, identifies the response data set from a service call. And the data table is gonna map a data table to the data view. So it typically matches the ERP table name. And then we have the server view, which you can choose the server schema, ERP ICE BAQ, and then the server set data ID. A lot of these are just gonna be ID names and table names, but the one that isn't shown here is gonna be BAQ ID, which would happen once you change the server schema, You it's the drop down, and you press on the BAQ and then this will pop up and that's where you can actually put in the BAQ ID when you're loading in a BAQ. But it looks like the previous version when you're inputting either an ERP or ICE or other server schemas. And then our next section is going to be our parent-child relationship section here. And the parent data view is going to be the source of the filtering data where your child data view is going to be the source that loads the filtered or dependent data. Um, and again, this is just where you can create links between different tables um, and custom views. You're allowed to pass a value from the parent into the into a method call to load the child data. But a lot of the data views are are very context aware. So a lot of the behaviors automatics are other little box here. We have static filter, and this is gonna be where you're able to hard code filter expressions. So let's say if you have a data view that uh, or two separate data views that you had binded to the same data set, but you want each of the data views to show you different data. This is where you can go in and apply a static filter. So any filter that's going to show you if you're on, um, if you have the cache detail data set um, binded to both data views, you could just set one of the static filters to the cache detail that is credit payment equals false, and then the other one is credit payment equals true, just so that you can have different data shown on both data views. Um, and then this little checkbox, dirty view, confirm changes. Once this option is turned on, it just enables displaying. Um, a system dialogue confirming what you want to do with unsaved changes. 
which is always turned on by default, but it's an option if you don't want those dialog boxes to pop up for you. And then it tells you that it's a memo table name and context override view onto the next section. This is where we have our columns. And this is again, where all the uh, column names of the data that you're pulling in are gonna go. So again, columns are the fields you pull from your data source and you can hide, rename or format these fields. And again, these are the fields that you're gonna use in your rules, your conditions and your bindings to use for the elements in your application studio. And then again, if you just press on that little button right there, you, you're able to add your columns. And this is what it looks like when, when you pull in that data from your data source, it'll automatically have the column names and captions and everything ready for you. But if you wanna add more, again, that's an option as well. And then on the very bottom underneath the columns, you have a tools section where you're able to actually add custom tools to the overflow menu or the toolbar component that is bound to your data view. These are all the components that we have in that tool section. So the type, you're able to do new, custom, new, delete, and custom delete. And the difference between those is that the new and delete tools are just used to add and remove records in that data table underlying the view, while the custom, new, and custom delete are made so that you can hook this specific tool to an event, actually. And then the ID is, again, the ID that you give it so that you're able to hook it to an event. The text is what's going to be displayed in the menu when you're um, hovering over it. And then the icon is like most icons, you have to use this format to get whichever icon that you choose. I have this little Pac-Man here that, again, is where your tool will show up in the toolbar in whichever form you choose to put it in. And now we can get to how would you load the data into your data view. So we have a few options here. You have a grid provider mode, which automatically loads the data when the form or grid initializes from data returned by query, by a query service function or function. Or you can use REST API, which calls a REST endpoint using the REST or REST ERP action, binding that response again to the view. Or you can create an event and you can use a BAQ, pull the data from that BAQ, or use a function, and again, pull that data from there. I'm gonna go into a little example of how I loaded the data in a customization that I had previously done. And what this customization did was essentially they wanted, they were in our change PO suggestions, and they wanted to be able to click on a new PO and then have the blanket POs, if it was a blanket PO, have them populate in this grid below. So I'm going to show you how I just pulled in the data from a BAQ that I wrote, how it populated our grid below. So what I first started with was creating a blank data view. I pulled in the data already, but you have to create a blank data view and then you just put in your data view ID. You put that the service schema is gonna be a BAQ. And again, I had previously made um, a BAQ that just pulls in blanket POs. If the chosen line was a blanket PO, then it would, it would show you all of the lines and releases under that one. And these were all of the columns that were in the BAQ. And again, it pulls it in automatically. So that's what that looked like. And then again, I added a panel card grid here and I binded this grid to the new data view that I had just created. So that way it knows that this is where that data is gonna show up in. And then here I created, this is my event and my trigger was just gonna be simply the row changing in that suggestion PO change. And row changed is just simply pressing on one row to the other. And then I used the ERP BAQ function and I'll show you what my properties were. On the next slide, this is the name of my BAQ that I called. And then this is what those properties look like for that function um, or for that tool. And basically, again, pretty simple. You just put in the BAQ ID, you could drop down and choose it from there. And then you put in the view name that we had just created. And then the mode is gonna be get because we're pulling in that data. And I forgot to mention that because this is gonna be based on Partnum, I had a parameter on my BAQ and I had to do that here as well. So you would go to BAQ parameters and put the field name partnum, and then you had to put that here. So that way it'll only give you those blanket POs for that specific partnum of that line that you're on. I didn't have any data on this one, but essentially when you would press on another one, 
it would, if it was a blanket PO, it would show you all of the parts and the lines and releases on that that were also a blanket PO, and it would have a check mark here, and you would be able to just change that data by pressing on a new one. But yeah, that's how I pulled in the data using a BAQ for that one, and 